The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning to you. It is 5 a.m. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Maddie Jansen. Elena Rusk in today for Alex. We begin with your 17 Crime Watch, a frightening murder story. A woman was killed while using an Apple AirTag to track down her stolen car. But now police say they've arrested four men responsible for her death. The shooting happened in South Bakersfield back in March. Investigators say when the 61 year old woman tried to take her vehicle back, she was shot in the head. She died a few weeks later at a hospital. Tuesday in Southern California, Bakersfield police arrested four men for her murder. In your 17 court watch now, another case has closed for the only school shooting in Kern County's history. It happened 10 years ago, but yesterday a jury found the city of Taft not liable. On that day back in 2013 at Taft High School, a 16 year old student entered a classroom with a shotgun and opened fire. He shot one student and tried to shoot another. An attorney for the victim called it the quote, most horrific event in the history of Taft. That's because a police officer assigned to that campus didn't show up to work that day. However, the jury determined the city did not violate its security contract, bringing an abrupt end to the week-long trial. The shooter is in prison right now. He's eligible for parole in 2027. Well, 17 News is your local election headquarters and Bakersfield Vice Mayor Andre Gonzalez now launching a bid for the state assembly. Can a high visibility challenger like Gonzalez knock off a fellow Democrat with advantage of incumbency? 17's Robert Price takes a look. Southern Valley voters appear likely to face an unusual choice in the Democrat heavy 35th Assembly District race next year. A challenger with plenty of name recognition and political experience and an incumbent with a lot less. It's usually the challenger who's dealing with name recognition issues, but that's where 35th District voters will find themselves. Andre Gonzalez, Bakersfield's current vice mayor, has formally launched his campaign to unseat incumbent Jasmine Baines, who's been in office less than a year after winning the open assembly seat by defeating County Supervisor Leticia Perez in what many considered an upset. Just as it was in November 2022, it'll be Democrat versus Democrat in 2024. Political consultant Neil Sanapa says Gonzalez will attract plenty of local support, but Baines, as the incumbent, will likely win the party endorsement. And Sanapa is a state delegate who has a vote. It's going to be interesting. I think there's going to be a little bit of a, uh, a struggle potentially between local Democrats that want to back uh, Andre Gonzalez for the work he's been doing for, you know, almost over a decade now. And uh, Jasmine Baines, who is, you know, for the most part, a political newcomer. Gonzalez, who's the executive director of Stewards, Inc., a faith-based nonprofit, has defeated incumbents twice before, the first time in 2010 when he was elected a Bakersfield City School District trustee, where he served six years, then again when he ousted incumbent City Councilman Terry Maxwell in 2016. Gonzalez has served on the City Council for seven years now. Is he going to be able to raise the money in order to really uh, fight back against uh, against Jasmine and uh, those, uh, those political PACs, um, corporations that supported her last time? Gonzalez says he already has more than 50 prominent endorsers in his corner, many of whom were to have attended his campaign launch Wednesday night in Old Town Kern. Meanwhile, Baines, a Delano family physician, seemingly came out of nowhere last November to become the first Sikh American and woman of Indian descent to serve in the state legislature. And so the race for campaign donations begins now. In downtown Bakersfield, Robert Price, 17 News. All right, well, Gonzalez and Baines are both Democrats. We reached out to Jasmine Baines for comment, but did not hear back as of news time. Making news around the nation, a January 6th rioter who held a stun gun to a D.C. officer's neck during the attack on the U.S. Capitol has been sentenced to 12 and a half years in prison. Daniel Rodriguez, who belonged to a telegram group called Patriots 45 MAGA Gang, pleaded guilty in February to several felony charges. He was caught bragging about the attack on a telegram chat, saying he tased, quote, the blue and got away. Ahead of his sentencing, Rodriguez spoke for about 20 minutes, saying he truly thought a civil war was going to begin and that he believed the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers formed because police were standing down across the country. Well, student loan borrowers, listen up. There could be a decision made in the Supreme Court 
as early as this week that could determine the future of your finances. With student loan payment pauses ending in August, borrowers are subjected to be making payments again. In fact, 44 million federal student loan borrowers making payments come October. However, President Biden's debt forgiveness plan might impact this if the Supreme Court rules on this today. If they choose to allow the Biden loan forgiveness to go through, you're going to have a lot of people very, very happy, particularly students. Uh, they haven't been making payments now for about three years on these loans, and we've seen now the impact that it's had on their lives. They've been able to participate more in the economy. They've been able to buy homes, pay down other debt. We've actually seen their, seen their credit scores go up. I think that it's uh, really helpful for students because of the simple fact that, you know, they're getting off to a better start in life instead of having a lot of debt. Single borrowers that made less than $125,000 in either 2020 or 2021 and married couples or heads of households who made less than $250,000 will qualify for the relief of $10,000. And if they received a Pell Grant in college, their student loan relief could go up to $20,000. And what if the student loan forgiveness doesn't happen? So come October, they're going to re-amortize those payments and you're going to have a new, a new set of payments. So you have to right now be preparing for that, knowing that, hey, my payment, I may have an extra $350 here come October. So you have to adjust your budget to be ready for that. For those not making payments now, it's important to be prepared to, regardless of the decision that could be made today. Now, tracking down how much you're going to be expected to be paying each month if this decision isn't not in the forgiveness favor is pertinent to your finances. For some borrowers, loans could have been sold to other collection agencies. You need to know what is, that, is, it, what is exactly going on with these payments so that you don't miss one. In studio, Aaliyah Fitzgerald, 17 News. All right, well, Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy was among congressional leaders unveiling a new stamp honoring late Congressman John Lewis. One, two, three. The stamp design features a photograph of the Georgia leader taken for Time magazine in 2013. The margins of the stamp have a 1963 photograph of Lewis outside a nonviolent protest workshop. The USPS statement praises Lewis for his more than 30 years defending and building on key civil rights gains in Congress. A woman lost her life in a crash on Interstate 5 yesterday. It happened yesterday morning just north of Rowley Road. This is near Button Willow. Traffic was backed up for several hours. CHP says a man driving an SUV drifted into an other lane, colliding with a semi-trailer. The smoke you see in the video, that's from the SUV catching fire. When the vehicle caught fire, um, there was fireworks in the rear compartment of the SUV which started to ignite and we had to shut the freeway down for a few moments as the fire department put those out. The woman who was killed was sitting in the passenger seat of the SUV. All right, well, crews responded to a brush fire caused by workers grinding metal near a fence along the 99 south of Olive Drive yesterday afternoon. Crews were able to put that fire out. No reports of any injuries. Meantime, Kern County firefighters will do a prescribed burn today to help prevent future wildfires. This is video of a previous burn. It's a part of the ongoing Grapevine Flats area that burned previously. This new burn taking place west of the five near Digir Canyon. It will begin at 1 p.m. today, but could last into the night. Fire officials say, though, by lighting these fires, they reduce the danger to communities like Digir Canyon and Lebec. Drivers asked to slow down and watch for fire equipment and personnel along the highway during this operation. A new study reveals California is home to one third of the nation's homeless. It's a staggering number that paints a clear picture of how the cost of housing is impacting people in Kern County and across the state. 17th Michaela Armstrong reports. It's pretty difficult because a lot of us um, that were housed before or trying to get houses, it's a long road and it's, pretty, and it's also pretty difficult and to get kicked out or to be have to be rehoused, it's, it, it takes a toll on you. The biggest field is pretty hot area, it's a pretty rough area as it is, and to be homeless and be living out here in a tent, it's, it's not fun by any means. You know, it's, it's, it's a tough deal. Michael Saunders became unhoused after the pandemic. A new reality he lives due to the cost of living in California, a primary example of what University of San Francisco found is contributing to the reason nearly 171,000 people are on the streets. According to Flood Ministries Director Jim Wheeler, who who helps reduce homelessness in Kern. The report reflects what he sees every day. This is nothing new. 
This, but what's great about the report is it affirms what we've been saying for a long time. According to the study, more than 90% of the state's homeless residents are from California, and more than 75% have lived in the same county where they were last housed. Researchers also found that more than 45% of all homeless adults are 50 or older. A common misconception is that people choose to be homeless, but the report shows the cost of housing in the state has become unsustainable. They want to get off the street. They want to get help. They want to get into some kind of stable housing situation, and so um, I, I don't think it's a matter of people necessarily making a choice to not um, to be homeless per se, but it's because of uh, their circumstances in life. The report makes policy recommendations to improve homelessness statewide, but Wheeler says a good place to start is affordable housing. If you don't want people living on the street, then you have to have a place for people to go. We need more affordable housing. Until we do that, until we meet that need, we're going to continue to see people on the street. Mikayla Armstrong, 17 News. The next few hours could be the most critical in the ongoing search for a missing sub two and a half miles below the surface of the ocean. The vessel with five men inside has been missing since Sunday, less than two hours after it began a journey to explore the wreckage of the Titanic. Four days later, the emergency oxygen supply inside the small capsule could be empty before noon. The U.S. Coast Guard is leading as the lead agency in a rescue effort that includes teams from around the world. Their command center is in Boston. That's where we find Jay Gray this morning with the latest. This morning, the unprecedented search and recovery effort is expanding and intensifying. And I've never seen equipment of that nature move that quickly. The number of ships scanning the surface expected to double from 5 to 10, and several remotely operated vehicles, including a French deep dive robot, will join the two underwater drones already looking for the missing sub near the ruins of the Titanic. The Coast Guard Command Center in Boston mapping out the search, focused on an area where Canadian P-3 aircraft continue to drop sonar buoys that have detected unusual noises described as banging sounds. I can't tell you what the noises are, but what I can tell you is, and I think this is the most important point, we're searching where the noises are, and that's all we can do at this point. With the very real possibility, the emergency oxygen supply on board the cramped, cold Titan submersible will run out this morning. The oxygen, that, that, that's just one piece of data, right? There, there are a lot of pieces of data that we need to consider. Teams continuing to work around the clock, refusing to lose hope. This is a search and rescue mission, 100%, and uh, we'll continue to put every available asset that we have in an effort to, to find the Titan and the crew members. Team leaders say they're in constant contact with the families of the men promising to continue their search effort for as long as necessary. Jay Gray, NBC News, Boston. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.